Hey gang, we are in Campton Hills today. We're about 50 miles west of Chicago, heading to a cemetery called Garfield Cemetery. Visit the grave of a 15-year-old young woman. Sad story. And I want to thank our friends on, well, one of our viewers, Cemetery Views, for tipping us off to the story. Got it off Facebook. They chimed in. Thank you very much. I never would have heard about this. And I also have to give a shout out to our moderators and Ashley and Kimberly and Debbie and Twyla who took it off Facebook and said, hey, you need to do this story. And darn right. Now I'm not on Facebook gang that much. I really created that more as a place for you all to interact and between Instagram and the comments and the email, I've got my hands full. But anyway, here is the cemetery. It's beautiful. And we are in. We're going to be paying respects today to Quincy Ariel Barnes Miller. And I just got off the phone with her best friend who lives in Georgia. She's an author. And she was good enough to spend, well, we talked for about an hour. And I got a lot of background on Quincy and everything. And her name is, well, she goes by as an author, H. Rhea. And I'll put the link to her book down in the description box. You can just scroll down. But this story is about a teen, a teen suicide, and we're really going to get into it. It's, it's actually a, a growing, it has been a growing problem. You inject social media and all the pressures and the kids growing up at the, that, that time of their lives in high school get really sensitive and all the hormones are kicking in. And it, it's really a pivotal, well, it's a pivotal time in everyone's life. And you know, these days, with everything that's going on, what we've advanced to, there's more pressure than, than, than ever on the kids. So it's, it's an ever-learning process, and I hope this is a story of hope and hope that we can all learn from this, especially parents, on how to cope with this and how to help our kids. So let's take a walk to Quincy's grave, and we'll talk about it as we walk along. Very old cemetery here. And interestingly, as I came in, I noticed this turnstile. Now, I have never seen anything like this before. So I thought I would just come over here and show you guys. I wonder if it works. It does. So, no entry fee today. So you can see here we are at the Garfield Cemetery and there is a, a plot marker here that commemorates a doctor, commemorates a Timothy P. Garfield from 1844 probably one of the settlers in this area. So yeah, let's walk along and let's talk about this story. Quincy was born here. She went to Batavia Community High School and just like all kids going through all the trials and tribulations, the highs and lows. Quincy came from a solid family, a very happy family, a tight-knit family, family with a lot of love. So you can see this, this can happen to anybody. Story we're going to talk about here. She had a boyfriend, and 
Unfortunately, her boyfriend had some depression issues, I understand. And, you know, you reach that age and maybe not able to deal with the peer pressures or the other pressures that you might be running into, that we all, many of us ran into. And he, you know, with that depression, don't know if that glommed on to Quincy, but Quincy was going through some depression and they were kindred spirits. Totally understandable. Uh, they were very close. And at the time, everyone was noticing that they were both very depressed together, and the thought was maybe, well, maybe it's best they not be together. Because, you know, the thought is they're feeding, feeding on each other, and it's all the negativity. So they were forced to break up. And maybe that's the first lesson we should talk about. Of course, hindsight is always 20-20. And here's another lesson that's, you know, in breaking up and the grades aren't doing real well. You can't really get involved in school performances like sports or other things. So that kind of magnified things. And looking back, you know, 2020 again, Maybe that's not the thing to do. Maybe the thing to do is embrace the extracurricular activities. Well, things were getting worse. And it culminated with this boy taking his life. Now, enter Facebook. Right away, you know what's happening on social media. Everybody's on social media, everybody's talking. Why, who, when, what happened, whose fault is it? Is it Quincy's fault? It must be Quincy's fault. You know there had to be some comments like that. I mean, that's where this kind of stuff starts, social media. Facebook. I'm not a fan of Facebook, by the way. It has its purpose, but we'll get beyond that. Quincy changed after that. Who wouldn't change? You just lost your boyfriend in the most horrific way. So she started going down farther. She got dark. Why can't you move on? Guilt. You add in that there are other kids at school, kind of a common thing, talking suicide. Guys, this happens a lot. Sophomore, junior, all those years in high school, those well, those molding years, those years of confusion. It was getting worse. You add on the guilt, there's the other kids talking suicide, all these, all these rumors and all this talk. And then you start to see the signs. What are the signs? Well, we did that episode just a couple of weeks ago of the boy that killed his family. And we talked about the signs that were there, the signs of no future, no future plans. Well, there were signs, of course, hindsight, as I keep saying, 2020. 
you know, what would be the colors at my funeral? This is all my fault. There is no tomorrow. And probably the final sign, going to her friends and telling them all that she loves them. That was the final sign. Quincy hung herself. She was found by her mom. Police came, crime scene, what's going on, everything you can just imagine. Absolutely up for grabs. Social media, again, all the rumors, all the talk. Whose fault is this? Again, it's, it's, it's like, isn't it enough? No, it just keeps going. It's like a spiral. Who knows who else was affected? Who knows who else may have been close to suicide? We'll never know, but what we do know is that this is Quincy's grave right over here. And I can tell you something. It took mom and friends, I think three years, to save enough money and donations to buy Quincy her headstone. Three years. And within three days, right here, some knucklehead or group of knuckleheads on purpose most likely came right off this gravel road that we just crossed they had to come in from right there down the gravel road and then swing their car right across here and smash the stone right into the fence and then they took off it's too bad there wasn't a motion detected camera here let me tell you so everybody got together and this gets beyond just the inner circles and the neighborhood. This now on GoFundMe, I mean her best friend we talked to, she put that together. God bless H. Rhea for her best friend. They got this stone. And one suggestion is to, I don't see on the trees here, but maybe there is hopefully a camera, is get a camera on this. They're not that expensive because those monsters are still out there. Boy, that makes me upset when I hear that. So, well, let's focus on, on Quincy. And such a beautiful stone it is. Quincy Ariel Barnes Miller, January 4th, 1995, the day she was born, and October 20th, 2010, that fateful day. And what a beautiful picture of Quincy we have here. They called her Poof because of her hair. Quincy had an unbelievable, awesome witty sense of humor. She was very upbeat before all this and if I may say very beautiful. A beautiful woman. It's really hard to believe that this could happen. She loved animals. She loved people. She loved poetry. She was an artist, softball player, photography. And most of all, she was very giving and very caring. And she was proud of who she was. She was half British and half Jamaican. And I only bring that up because her friend told me she was so proud of that and they would laugh about it. They would laugh. 
There's some uh, amazing pictures of Quincy here. We'll get a couple of close-ups. Isn't that nice? So thank you to everybody who made this stone possible. We tried to donate. Of course, when I first saw the article, I was looking at old news. They hadn't reached their goal. So I'm like, we'll do it. We got you covered. But they got it. They got it. Here it is. But I'm going to tell you what, we should all consider donating to a fund in Quincy's memory that is for high school students. And I will put that link in the description box. I believe her mom is managing that. And we see a lot of coins. Coins mean a sign of respect. And I think she liked turtles. I know she liked animals, but I'm going to guess that she liked sea turtles. Isn't that great? And isn't it great how, how well maintained this is? This whole cemetery, people take pride here. You can tell. Well, hopefully we can all learn a little bit of something here in this story and we this is a story of hope it really we need to look at it as a story of hope and in Quincy's memory it's going to help a lot of other kids get through their darkest times so Quincy's doing good work in heaven rest in peace Quincy rest in peace